Well, I think the, the energy of the exhibition is set by the large Deborah Forgiveness sculpture in the hallway. In the past, my work was always about being the seeker, being on the journey, and now there's a sort of sense of thereness or coming homeness. It feels far more grounded, it's far more about the body, far more about being on this earth, far more about the material world and that acceptance and surrender to what we are, rather than looking for transcendence. The idea for the Big Deborah figure actually came to me in a meditation about four years ago. And I had the sense of this woman growing out of rock and her lap was a bowl and sort of like sweet milk sort of seeped from her breasts and then the bowl overflowed as a bounty as promised. The idea was there and when I'd sort of seen the image I'd sort of vaguely thought of the, you know, Leonardo's Madonna, the rocks, and I thought they'd be those kind of rocks, but those did not resonate with me. And I didn't know what kind of rocks to make. And then Bridget and Graham invited me to go to Ethiopia with them. And the first thing was people asked me my name and I said Deborah. But they heard it D-E-B-R-E -E, and D-E-B-R-E -E means mountain in Hamaric. So they said your name means mountain. So I thought, well, that's good. I need, I need to resolve how am I going to make this mountain. It makes sense. You know? And then the most amazing part of the trip for me was when we went up north to Giralta. The rocks, those mountains, were just the rock that I knew it had to be. And uh, at Giralta, the ancient churches, which have been hollowed into the mountain, and you walk in, and the ancient paintings all dealt with symbols I've been using for years, horse and riders, serpents, lions. So it felt like the world was my cloak and I was dancing with the world. It was like everything that linked to what I was doing. I mean, I realize when I use words in images, it's about the poetry of the difference. I don't want to use a word to describe something. You know, the famous surrealist notion of the trance encounter of the umbrella. You know, I've always had this sense that if you put unlike things together and bring them close together, they're compressing the gap of everything. A friend of mine gave me a copy of Rilke's Book of Hours as a birthday present a few years ago. I initially read it as a thief, not just to absorb, and words and phrases would jump out at me, and I made lists and lists of little phrases that came from the poems. They did resonate. I mean, Rilke is obviously a poet who's involved in the spiritual quest. I realized paper for me is not just carrying an image. It needs to become a thing. It needs to become a substance. The large works be earth now and the large horse. That paper is Korean rice paper. And when it's wet, it is so fragile. But the more you work on it, it absorbs and it becomes stronger than anything. You can't, can't tear it, you can't cut it. It sort of becomes its own skin. It becomes its own body. So that embodiment into the paper is why I think I say I make paintings more like a sculptor. I need that sense of material. I quite like the fact that the sort of different sides of the face sort of suggest an inner turmoil or shift in emotion. I don't want the face just to be an outside description. I want every face that I do, I need to feel what it is to be in that face. And it is that kind of emotional shift within, so maybe it is the shadow and the other. The cave is a new one for me, and 12, 15 years ago I'd done, if there is such a thing as a mini Sangorm initiation, it was only a weekend, but a group of us were invited to go up into Sangorma Valley and we slept in this cave. So I saw the cave as a sort of place of initiation, liminal space. So once I found the image of the cave through that chance sort of sweep of paint across because I was working on the early printing of it. I then became interested in that initiation liminal space um, and the cave just appeared because I was thinking well how do I link these two plates I've got some fingers there and I just did a sweep of something on top and I thought ah oh, it's a cave. The art that interests me is the art as power object, is going back, looking at African cultures and Kisi, of actually making something to alter the world.
going back to like ancient sort of civilizations where the arts didn't just describe something, it actually made a difference. So I've always been interested in the fact that the will and the making of something is a bit like, I suppose, voodoo, magic, you know, that notion that it actually can alter something. For me, each work that I make is a kind of alchemical process to alter myself. I would never make a work that horrified me, I would never let it off. And sometimes, you know, I'll start and it'll be something, something else. It, it feels like a personal transformational process, each work that I make. But it's part of the journey of how do I alter? What do I learn from making this work? Where do I go? Because, you know, the main thing for me is not to be in control, is to get out of the way, to allow something to come through me and how that changes me.